was you know, living my life incorrectly. I just was shown a good example. And because, is that you? Yeah, it could be me. Is that me? See, that experience is like the experience he was talking about. And that is that you're able to actually feel what they're saying. What they preach, what they teach, you're feeling and you're seeing. That's what you did not see. That's what's called hypocrisy, right? When they say one thing, but their actions lead you to a different understanding. So how do we relate to younger people? Now listen, this isn't only about younger people. This is about every age demographic. We live in a world today where most people, if they're not belonging to a church, don't want to hear anything about church or God. And if they do belong to a church, they don't want to hear about your Adventist church because I already belong to a church. It's the difference. Okay? And let me ask you a question. Is there a difference between the Adventist church and what we have been raised to do in other churches? And there is another answer to that that depends on your ideology. Because there are those who say there is no difference. We, we are like everybody else. <laughs> but if we're like everybody else, then there's no reason for us to have ever been formed. And there's no reason for us to stay what we are today. But what we have become is we have become a denomination and an institution instead of a movement. Okay? What we as Adventists have been called to do is to proclaim the gospel message. Now, do you guys know the difference between a Protestant and a Catholic? The Protestants were called Protestants. Why? Because they were protesting certain teachings of the church at that time. And are the Protestant churches today still called Protestants? Seventh-day Adventists, are you Protestants? No, you're Protestants. You come from the line of the Reformation. But the question is, is, do you even know what you're protesting? Is there any difference between you and all the other thousand denominations out there that call themselves Protestants? Do they even know what they're protesting? Do you know the shoulders that you're standing on and the truths that have cost so much blood and so much sacrifice? And we come and we sit today in comfort and in air conditioning, in freedom and in relative peace for an hour or two, depending on how long-winded your preacher is. <laughs> and then you go home and you relive your real life. Okay? Is that what Christianity is about? This is why you need to make a decision today, right now. Why do you follow Jesus Christ? Does he mean anything to you? Is he you coming to him because that's what your parents want you to do? Is it because that's your tradition of what you do every Saturday? Or is Jesus real to you? All these questions that I asked you, they can all be answered very simply. But the problem is, is that our individual ideologies separate us from the simpleness of the gospel. And that is, Jesus Christ is the focus. And Jesus Christ goes beyond culture, goes beyond political ideology, goes beyond conservatism, goes beyond liberalism. The Pharisees in Jesus' day, were they conservative or were they liberal? They were extremely conservative, right? And so when Christ came on the scene, what was the problem that they had with him? They thought he was a liberal. And they killed him for it. Now we in the church today are conservative and we're ready to, through our speech, 
murder our brother that's a liberal, and vice versa. Does it have to be one or the other? Do you know how you answer that question? The question is contained in one book, and that book is called the Bible. And if you submit to the indwelling in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit will show you the truth, and the truth will what? Set you free. Now, let me tell you something. If you want to have 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, up to 30 some years old people here, and older, and they look around and they see more white hair or no hair than dark hair, then you better have something that appeals to them. Is that right? And if you're going to get flipped out about the kind of music that appeals to them, then you better have something else. You know what that something else is? Love. The authentic love of Jesus Christ. Because the authentic love of Jesus Christ will show them the difference between music that glorifies God and music that doesn't glorify God. Now let me ask you a question. Is there a difference between worship music that glorifies God and is there such a thing as worship music that doesn't glorify God? Yes. Yes. Okay? Which is why some people like hymns, some people like uh, contemporary music. That's a big battle within the church. And it separates church and it splits them. Who's right and who's wrong? Young people look at that and go, you guys are nuts. Non-Adventists look at us and go, listen, this is what they said at this meeting. They said there, and I've heard this line of reasoning over and over and over again, especially when it comes to Adventists. There are children out there who are being molested by their parents by their family members. There are children out there who are being forced to work on the street. There are adults out there who cannot find work, who have lost their jobs and lost their homes, and you're worried about ordaining women? And you look at that and you shake your head and you go, hmm, that's actually a good question, but those who are worried about ordaining women, do they have a ground to stand on? See, the reason why other churches don't think about that anymore now here's another one. You guys are worried about wearing pants to worship service for women. Okay? Or, what kind of music you play. The reason why the other churches don't think about that no more is because they have gone so far away from the truths that they used to hold that it means nothing to them no more. So now, they're looking at social issues. But inside the church, does how we worship matter to God? Yes. yes. Here's one. I read this whole thing online. Uh, a friend of mine at Adventist wrote on there how Sunday became the day of worship. Those of you who are Adventists, you should know how the day changed. Okay? So you have a very good article on it. And now you have uh, a dialogue between people who say, we should keep all days holy. And that as Christians, we should do what Jesus did, and that is not just keep the law, but magnify and go beyond the law. But the question is, is do you follow what God says? And did God separate and sanctify a specific day? Yes. When you look at the creation story, did he create and do his work in six days? And did he do something special on the seventh? So throughout Genesis to Revelation, has that ever changed? No, no. So those who keep the Sabbath, do you have a biblical uh, foundation for why you keep it? Yes. Those who choose, choose, they see it and they choose to say, I keep every day holy. Are they really following what God has said? There is a difference between submitting to what God says in His Word and following it according to His Word and 
saying, I will follow God according to my dictates. This is the beginning of how <laughs> the religious battle started. Do you know where that battle first originated? Not the one with Lucifer, but here on this earth. It was the difference between Cain and Abel. They both worship the true God, the only God. Cain bought the best of his produce and sacrificed that to God, right? And what did Abel bring? He brought a blood sacrifice. So with that, which offering did God accept? Why did he not accept Cain's? Did he not like Cain? See, because I know there's a scripture that says, no, sorry. Did he not like Cain? Did he not warn Cain, even after he killed his brother, that if you do right, things will go well with you? But if you don't, sin is waiting at the door. And it will have mastery over you. Right? God sets the ground rules. The question is, is will you follow His rules? And this is the difference between old people, young people, middle-aged people, and that is, will you actually follow God's rules? In his word. Now, the problem with that is, I see God's rules my way and think you ought to follow them my way. <laughs> but God is telling me that I have to accept how you view your world, how you come to God, and accept that with authenticity, with truth, and with love. And to realize that your point of view when it comes to God, when it comes to the Bible, is valid. And so we teach, we discuss, and we go back to the Word to see what the truth is between our differing points of view. But in the end, Paul said that we need to submit in love to our brothers and sisters, not thinking ourselves better than them, but showing them Christ's love. If young people saw the authentic love of Christ in His people, I don't think it would matter what kind of music that you played. Amen. I think they would fall in love with Jesus Christ. Amen. And then the main thing would finally be the main thing. Now listen, I've heard that as well. You need to keep the main thing the main thing. That's a good way to say don't worry about doctrine, just the love of Christ. Bob, if I told you I loved you, and that I cared for you, and I let you walk across the street in front of a bus, do I really love you? <laughs> if I saw that you were hungry, and you needed food or clothing, and I said, God bless you, may you meet your needs, and I walk away, and I could have met your needs, do I really love you? No. That's what young people see, and that's what outsiders see in Christians. Is they see us talk, and that's it. Because brothers and sisters, if you leave here and you're talking about your brothers and sisters, not in a positive way, and your unchurched neighbor sees that or hears that, what do you think they think about you? What do they think about your Christ? Until... The world sees Christ in His people and in us. They will not come to Him until young people see authentically Jesus living in you and you giving them the opportunity to use their talents the way God wants them to use it. That they actually say, I not just go to this church, but I am a part of that church. When you allow that to happen, they'll stay, they'll bring their friends. But if you want to put your view of the world on a 19-year-old, they're going to look at you and they're going to turn away. Accept them. Find out who they are. Give her the answer. And it's not just young people. It's everybody that you meet. Patty?
I would just have to say, what, I, I do remember when I was a teenager, and that was back like in the late 60s and early 70s, and it was a whole, the world was changing so yes. much back then. And uh, the contemporary music that um, we enjoyed <clears throat> was different than what I was raised up on. And my dad, uh, the contemporary music, I mean, I still enjoy a lot of the music that uh, isn't the traditional hymns that we sing. And when I sing at church, you know, I'll hear it from my dad who says, well, that was nice, but I didn't know it, I didn't recognize it. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's, and this is like how many generations later is that, you know, I, and music was so important to me always and still is, and I love all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. But um, he's, he's gotten kind of uh, accepting that I sing things that he doesn't necessarily know, but he might enjoy it anyway. And that is the key to actually making this thing we call Christianity work. And that is not, let me make sure I phrase this right. Again, Paul says that we should not esteem ourselves higher than others, but that we should put their needs before our own. And that is what your dad had to come to the decision of, that the music that you like, maybe might not be that bad. Right. But that, I mean, in comparison now, the music that the, the young people play today is so different than what was, you know, when I was young and it was this kind of the same attitude that the adults had. That never changed. Yeah, and because it was different. Yes. It was different. You want to have a scary thought? 30 years from now, the music that the young people are listening to now is going to be the classics that they might be playing in church. Let me ask you a question. These old hymns that you sing, these classics, when they were made, were they old hymns and classics? You don't think the church might have had a problem with some of those? Listen, don't close your mind to generational differences, but show the love of Jesus Christ. And in doing that, then you can bridge that gap and share truths. Do truths change? The truths that were in the days of Martin Luther and the reformers that came before him and after him, are they still the same truths today? Right? Truth doesn't change. It's why it's truth. Okay? So don't be afraid of that truth. But also, don't be afraid if there's something that's different that you don't understand or don't want to accept. Because if it's important to a young person, have to get into their world. And with that, gently, easily. Now, let me ask you a question. This is where I close him. And believe me, I will close. Jesus was with his disciples for how many years? And at the end of his ministry, did his disciples have it all together? No. Did they have all the truth? No. Did they know everything? How many times in the Gospels did you find Jesus actually hammering his disciples for their false theology? How many times? There's a couple. Yeah, he stole them. There's a couple. But now I want you to think about it. Jesus had all the truth and these guys were with him. Now, don't you think if you were in his position and you thought the way you think, how many times would you be hammering these guys? So, this is why Paul says for us to have the mind of Christ. Have that mind of Christ. Put away yourself, put away your cherished ideas and thoughts, and have the mind of Christ and love people like he does. One last question or answer, and that's going to be from Kyla, and then we'll close. Growing well, up, um, my dad always listened to country music mm -hmm. and he always <clears throat> and even um, my grandma my dad's uh, 
um, I think mom always had um, the radio on in the kitchen was because of the music on. Mm -hmm. And I grew up listening to country music, and I mean, still do. I love it. But, mm -hmm. and I don't, I mean, I love country music because that's what I grew up listening to. Mm -hmm. And that's all I listen to. It comes to me uh, uh, music. Well, I spent years trying to avoid country music. Why? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and uh, the last set of employees I had, that's what they liked to listen to. What I did is took my own advice and became more accepting of the differences that we had and uh, realized that this was something important to them. And so, instead of just saying how terrible it was, I actually, you know, would listen, well, no, but <laughs> I let them listen to it. I listen to contemporary Christian music. This is why I listen to it work. But let me tell you something, and that's why I listen to it every day. If it's not, if it's not preaching, which this is, this is the fine line that we had to draw. They can't handle preaching. Hmm. They can't handle it. It, 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 it ruins their days. <coughs> Makes my day go by easier. So I can't really deal with secular music on a regular basis. It, it tends to put me in a wrong frame of mind. And they've learned that if I'm in that frame of mind, and they mess something up, they don't like the outcome. So it's better that I listen to Christian music. It helps keep me focused on doing the right thing and reacting in the right way. So we compromise and we listen to contemporary Christian music. Now, I know almost every contemporary Christian song that's on the radio, because they play the same 20 songs over and over and over again. But, there are songs that are played that I wouldn't use in the worship service. I listen to it during the week, but for me, I wouldn't use it in the worship service. But I also know people who would, and they have no problem with that. And I accept that, okay? Because God didn't put me here to be their mommies. What God did put me here to do was to dialogue and have relationship, and through that relationship to talk, and to understand their world and their view of God, and to see if I can learn something from them. Not to show them they can learn something from me. And that is most of the time what our problem is. <coughs> Closing in this morning is number 327. I really thought I'd hear an amen when I finished that. Like, <laughs> thank God it's done. <laughs> I had two weeks worth of stuff built up.